welcome back to the channel. Today we have our first ever free build. That's right, it's a rebuild that I am going to give away for free. And not the kind of free where you gotta buy some kind of merchandise that you don't want or need. The kind of free where you don't pay anything. I'm just gonna give it to you. I'm absorbing all the costs myself. So our free build here is a 2009 Honda Civic LX. Now it's not something I would normally buy. It's got kind of high miles on it. But well, I guess it is kind of something I'd normally buy. It's a clear title, total loss. Uh, that doesn't have any body damage. Uh, so how did it get totaled? Well, it has engine damage. So my guess is they hit something on the road and blew the engine, you know, probably ran out of oil. I don't know, we haven't really looked at it yet. So in addition to fixing whatever damage was caused by the accident, we also have some somebody's been here before stuff to fix. Because, well, wouldn't be one of my builds if somebody hadn't been here before. So we're gonna have to take care of that. But our main goal is a car that is mechanically sound and reliable for the next owner. So that's what we're going for. And this thing has a few miles on it. It's not something I would normally rebuild and sell. So I'm gonna rebuild it and give it away, I guess. Uh, it's got 253,000 miles on it, but it's a Honda. So it's just a baby. So let's get it down to the shop, see if we can get it started and get it unloaded and take a better look at it. enough juice for the beeper. Fully charged battery, that never happens. Sounds terminal. I'd say that engine is locked up, so. Fully charged battery. Large clunking sound. They might have been right about that uh, that engine. So let's take a look at it and see if my hunch was right that they ran over something, ripped a hole in the oil pan, and just drove until it quit. One last try to see if maybe that was the time it was going to start. Nope. give that one a solid eight out of 10 just for duration. And you might make fun of my screams, but at least they made my coworkers laugh. And now it's up on the lift. I'm really not this short. I can't walk under a Honda Civic. I mean, I am short, but I think we found our problem, an extra inspection port in that oil pan. And it looks like they were driving down the road because we have a lot of oil coating the bottom of the car. It'll drive through rust proofing. A little late though. It's a Michigan car, it's a little rusty. but. It's still solid, so it'll work. It's a pretty clean car. Somebody took care of it. And there's all the money I'm gonna make on this build, for real this time. I won't even make that. And a little console stew going on down there. It's actually in pretty decent shape for all the miles it has on it. Ooh, water. Thirsty? This deck lid's been replaced. I think most of the car's been painted. It's not peeling like most Hondas. A little body work right there. Now I know a lot of you are just here for the free car, so I'm not gonna make you wait till the end of the video to find out how to get your free car. However, if you are interested in what goes into this rebuild and a lot of my other rebuilds, watch the rest of this video, subscribe to the channel, and you'll find out all of that and the story of this car. If you're just here for the free car, listen up, here's your part. So first, Who's eligible for this car? Anybody that lives in the United States with the exception of Alaska and Hawaii, just because shipping this car to those places would cost way too much. So if you live in the other 48 states, you're eligible. I'm not Oprah. I can't give everybody a car. I only have one to give away. So in order to decide who's getting it, we need to have some kind of contest. Now, I'm not gonna make you buy merchandise. However, if you want to, 
My Drive Crash Fix Repeat shirts are available in my Teespring store uh, until they take them down again. So I guess get them while they last because they'll probably take them down again and I never get around to putting them back up there. It's not going to help your odds of winning, but go ahead and buy them. I'm not going to stop you. In order to have this contest, we're going to have an email contest. Email this email address here. The link is also down in the description if you don't want to type it out. I don't blame you. And I'm also going to put these rules down there if you already get bored and don't want to listen to me. I also don't blame you there. So if you're still with me and you're still listening, in this email, I want you to tell me who you are, where you're from, give me a little story about what's going on in your life and why you need this car. And then tell me how you would use this car to hopefully improve your life. If you don't need this car, but you know somebody that does, share this video with them and have them follow the rules and have them submit their email and maybe they can use this car. If you're part of an organization, like a church or a shelter or a school, then you think that you could use this car in your organization to help a group of people, that's great. Have somebody from within your organization send me that email with you know the description and how you're gonna use it. And if we can help a group of people instead of just one, that's fantastic. Even better than helping just one. So don't think your stories aren't worthy. Just email them to us and we'll decide. Now, the pizza girl is going to go through all these emails. The email contest closes, by the way, December 31st, 2022, so the end of this year. Uh, January 1st, she's going to start going through all of them, and she's going to narrow them down to the best 10 or the most worthy 10. And then she's going to pass them on to me. And I'm the bad guy, and I'm going to knock out the other nine and hopefully find the person most deserving of this car. And then I will get in contact with you. You don't have to give me any personal information. I'm just going to send you an email. So if you reply to the email, great. Uh, we'll get in contact with each other. I'll check out your story. If your story checks out, you get a car. If your story doesn't check out, you don't get a car. And I go on to the next person. Yeah, that's right. I'm that bad guy. I'm going to make sure your story is legit so that we're giving it to a deserving person. So hopefully if everything goes according to that plan by the middle of January, we should be through all these emails and getting a hold of people and be ready to give this car away by the end of January, beginning of February. That's if things go according to plan. I've never done this before, so this could be a complete train wreck. And I hope it makes good videos then because that's all it will be good for. But on the off chance that it does go well, uh, we'll probably do this again. Um, I've hoped for the best, but prepared for the worst. So good luck, everyone, and on to our rebuild. Looks like we have a special guest appearance today. So we're going to pull the closeout panel off so we can get our bumper off. There's just a couple push-in clips across the top. Pop the centers out of those and pop them out of there. The pieces on the side that cover up the edge of the fender go over the closeout panel, so we just have to take the front edge off. Slip the closeout panel over it. And we can slide it out from under the grill and slide it around the lever for the hood latch. Now we can unbolt the top of our bumper and not checking the direction of your impact before you go hammer down is a good way to break the bolt off in the radiator support. Now we'll disconnect our battery. We we'll use an impact just to really annoy all the tool experts. We can unbolt our hold down We'll pull the little rods out of there before you drop them down into Narnia and have to go on a recovery mission. Unbolt our negative cable. And we can pull the cover off our fuse box and unbolt the battery cable from the fuse box. We'll unclip the harness retainer so we can set this harness back up on the engine and out of our way. Now we can see the battery. Pull that thing out of here, set that off to the side. This harness wants to play. We'll stuff it down out of our way. Unclip the top of the air box. And we can unclip the harness that goes across the top to the mass airflow sensor. And we can pull the cover off. And while we're here, we'll check the air filter. That's brand new. 
pull the cover off for the PCM, unbolt the PCM, and now we can start unplugging it. I'm just going to take all the plugs out and we'll set the PCM in the car so we don't break it. We'll unbolt the ground strap on the passenger side, unclip it from the engine, and we'll set it off to the side. Now we'll do the other ground strap. This one's on the trans mount. Just pull it out of there and set it off to the side. I don't want to forget those. Now we can take our tires off. Somebody's been here before. Got some brand new wheel studs and hubs and an ABS sensor. So we're going to pop off these little push-in clips for our splash shield which is also brand new from Honda. Still has a tag on it. We can unscrew our bumper from the fender. This one Phillips screw in the back. Put a wiggle and pull and it pulls out of its clip. We we'll go over to the driver's side and pull this wheel off. And this one's a little more stuck. So we'll put a lug nut on there, a couple threads. And we'll give it a good karate kick. Pull our lug nut off of there. We only put that on there so we don't send the tire across the shop when we kick it. They like to bounce into things and break stuff. As much fun as that is, I don't like fixing it. Now we'll pull our splash shield off on this side. The splash shield goes all the way across the bottom. Pull the screw out of our fender that holds our bumper on. Let it wiggle and pull. Now we can get the splash shield off the bottom of our bumper. Also clips onto the subframe. Just a bunch of push-in clips. We'll pop them out of there. And our splash shield falls out. And there's still one more clip hanging on. Now we can pull our bumper out. Pull it out of the clips under the headlights. And we'll set this off to the side. And our recycled igloo cooler came with, or as the experts want to call it, an energy absorber. So we'll unbolt our exhaust in the front. This is one of those special curved bolts for going around corners. I can't believe it actually came out without heat, but I figured I had nothing to lose. Two for two. No way. I'm a gambling man. Let's go all in and see if we can get all these bolts out without breaking them and without using heat. These are actually nuts. And they came out. Let me go pull this little crossover pipe out of here. With that pipe out of the way, we can get this little inspection cover off. So you can see our torque converter bolts. And we'll pull the cover down that covers up the shift cable. We'll knock this cover off with a little method that Fonz taught me. With the bend the tabs over, there's a little keeper that holds the bolt in for the shifter. We can unbolt the cable from the bracket. Now we'll unbolt the end of the cable from the shaft that that little keeper was holding on there. Wiggle it off of there. Pull the cable out of here and drape it up over the exhaust out of our way. Now we can get to a couple torque converter bolts. Pry bar in here and see if we can pry it far enough to get to the next one. We've got a little movement. We're just going to do this one of the wrench. There's eight of them on this thing. Honda went for quantity, not quality. Try turning it a little bit. There's really no good way to get on those teeth. So we're going to have to go with plan B. Plan B is a big breaker bar on the crankshaft pulley bolt. And luckily it's a Honda and these things are always tightened up to 8,000 foot-pounds so we can go backwards because it's the only way the engine really wanted to go. That got us one more torque converter bolt. We'll spin that out of there and keep pressing our luck. Almost. Okay. That's another one. 
since it is spinning over, I'm guessing that it's probably just spun a bearing and the bearings are stacked on top of each other. I don't know. We're going to let the Shadow Gnome take this apart later and figure out exactly what went wrong inside. So when he does, I will report back to you on his findings and let you know what it looked like inside. One more bolt. And I think we're done. So we'll spin the torque converter and make sure it's disconnected. If it spins, it's done. We got all of our bolts out. While we're down here, we'll pull the bolts out to hold the trans to the engine. Just the two bottom ones because it's a lot easier to get to these now than when it's sitting on a cart later on. Now we'll unbolt our engine mount that holds it to the subframe. Now we're going to start pulling our suspension off. On this side, since we're gambling, we're going to unbolt the ABS sensor from the knuckle, see if we can get it out of there. Somebody replaced it not long ago, so it should come out of there. Okay, the bolt's out. That's a third of the battle. And so is our sensor. We'll unclip it from the strut, and we'll set it off to the side. We can unbolt our brake hose. Got to run the bolt back and forth a couple times so we don't end up snapping it off in there. We can unbolt our brake caliper. We'll leave the bracket on there. We'll hang the caliper up. And our brake pads are pretty well seized in there. We're going to have to clean up those slides a little bit. We'll unbolt our drive axle nut. Tap our drive axle out of there. Moves pretty free since somebody's been here before. Somebody's been here before. I'm not complaining. I'll make the strut unbolting face. We'll unbolt our struts from the knuckle. And pull the bolts out of there. Push our drive axle out. And let everything kind of just hang there. We're going to put the bolt back in with a nut on it, just so I remember the direction they go in there. Now onto this side. I'm done gambling for the day. I feel I've pushed my luck. So we're going to have to take this ABS wire off the hard way. We're going to leave it in the knuckle and we're just going to unclip it from all of its little clips. There's a little hole in the rail we can reach in and get to the bottom clip here. We can unplug it. And we're just going to leave that with the knuckle because there's no way it's coming out. We'll unbolt our brake caliper and our brake hose. Put the bolt back in there so we don't lose it. And so we can get it back out of our socket because it's stuck. One more clip for our ABS wire. We'll pull our caliper off of there. And we'll hang it up. Can unbolt our drive axle nut and that drive axle moves nice and easy. We'll unbolt our strut from our knuckle. Wiggle and pull and it's all apart. I'll pop our drive axles out of there, out of the trans side. And we'll slide them out of the way. Out the passenger side out and slide that out of the way. Now we can unbolt our subframe bolts. These center bolts you don't have to take all the way out. You actually leave them in there partially. They help to align the subframe when you're putting it back up in there. There's actually a little tab that sticks down off of them and it lines up with the little tab in the subframe. We're going to loosen up the one on the other side. It's a little rusty, so we're going to have to work this one back and forth. We'll run it all the way out just to clean up the threads, and then we'll put it back in so that it's there to help us line it up when we're putting the subframe up. And so we can get the socket back off of it. Now we're going to head down underneath the dash, and we're going to become a contortionist. All my years in the circus are finally paying off. We're going to pull this collar down over the bottom of our steering shaft. 
just pushes onto some studs that are in the firewall. And now we can see our steering shaft. We'll unbolt that. And we'll slide our steering shaft up. It doesn't want to play nice. Try with the other hand. Still no luck. We're going to have to climb in here. And use both hands. Kind of twist it and wiggle it. Get it just right. And it'll slide off of there. Turn the steering wheel a little bit. See if that helps. And it's a little rusty. There we go. We're going to set that off to the side. We don't want to rotate that steering wheel. Actually, this one has a lock. It won't rotate. We're good. Back outside. Now we'll unbolt our power steering line. This has one of those wire hose clamps, which I'm not sure if I like better than the spring clamps. Well, I definitely don't like them when they rust because they just twist when you try to take them off instead of unscrewing. So when we finally get that mess out of there, we can wiggle the hose off of there and make a mess. There is a drain pan catching that. I'm not contaminating the shop seals water. Don't worry. And we're going to take that off and, you know, In the pile. We can disconnect our pressure sensor for the power steering hose. And we'll unbolt the power steering hose from the back of our intake and unbolt it from our power steering pump. And wiggle it out of there. Now all that's left are the four subframe bolts, one in each corner. And with any luck, they may actually come out of there. There's the last one. So we're laying down on the job so we can drop the subframe down on the cart. The engine's staying in the car for now. These come out separately. You can take them out together, but they're actually meant to go in engine first, then subframe. So we'll go up a little bit. Make sure we're not testing the tensile strength of any wires or hoses or anything like that. Looks like we're all good. We keep going up. And our subframe is now separate. You take the engine with, you don't have to take the power steering line off of the power steering pump, but that's about really all you're saving. So now with that pesky subframe out of the way, we can get to our heater hoses on the back. Slide our spring clamps back. And then we'll break the hoses loose from our heater core. Hopefully without crushing the ends of the heater core, but no guarantees. Those are special pliers that are, have a circle in them so they don't crush down on the hose. And as you may have guessed, are available in my Amazon store. One more spring clamp on our power steering reservoir hose. This just goes from the pump to the reservoir. Slide that back and push that hose off. And probably make a mess. Now we can unbolt our battery cable and our air intake hose. Pry that intake tube off of our air box. And more spring clamps. Yay! These are the evil kind with a locking tab that hold themselves open until you accidentally touch them with your hand and they snap closed and you end up with a big hole in the middle of your hand, which wouldn't happen if you were wearing gloves. We you know I'm not going to wear those. We'll slide our radiator hoses off, tuck them out of the way. I win. Get our little tool in there to peel our hose off. Up that one out of the way. 
Now we can unbolt our engine mount. And this one didn't quite come apart like it was supposed to. That stud is supposed to stay in the engine. We'll have to fix that later. Now we can unbolt our trans mount on the other side. And it's got a little tension on it, so we're going to pry up on it a little bit. Get it to slide out of there like it's supposed to. This little cover off the top. And we should be good. And we can unbolt our AC lines. Our AC machine is doing its thing. It's just clearing out the lines now. It's already vacuumed down the system. And we go our hoses off. Set those off to the side. Get the other one. Now we can disconnect our AC machine. It's done doing its thing. We're not going to need that for a little bit. Now we can lift the car up just a little bit. We still have some more stuff to disconnect, but we're going to give ourselves a little room because all that stuff is on the back of the engine. There's a fuel line. There's a little safety on the top of it. We'll pop that off, a little plastic cover. Now we can get to our little clamp, quick disconnect. Push in the two tabs and spray gas all over the place. Now we have a purge line that goes to our throttle body. We'll pull that off of there. And we have a vacuum line that goes to our brake booster. Wiggle that off of there. And now we can pull our heater hoses off that we disconnected earlier. I didn't want to pull them off when I was underneath it because I really didn't want an antifreeze shower. Even though Honda does use the blue Kool-Aid, it's still not fun. And we should be ready to come out. So we're going to lift it up. We're going to go slow again, make sure we got everything. We don't want to find out the hard way we missed something. Looking good so far. Honda engines are pretty easy to remove. Not quite out of the woods. We're good. We got everything on the first track. So that's about as far as we're going to go today. We got the engine out of our Honda. We figured out what was wrong with it. And now it's time to switch everything over and put it back in. We'll do that next time. But make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you can follow the story of this little free build Honda. And also see what other videos I have coming up on days other than Friday. Because I'm not quite that predictable. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.